As I've said in practically half of my videos before, one of the main problems in Formula 1 is how there's only 20 seats. And if you're an OG who watched my pretty poor videos to begin with, I actually have a microphone now, you may have seen the What If F1 Had 30 Cars video, of which I've redone the thumbnail since that looked pretty horrid before. Anyway, I said in that video how I thought that Japanese driver Naoki Yamamoto was worthy of the third Alpha Tari seat if it existed, and how I'd make a video on him in the near future. So a grand total of 63 days later, aka the near future, here we are, making a video on this immensely talented guy, and why I think he's worthy of a Formula 1 seat. Naoki was born on the 11th of July in 1988 in Utsunomiya, Japan, basically already eliminating him from ever competing in F1 since he's 32 years old, which based on Formula 1 terms means they may as well have gone and put my grandpa in that seat instead. Back on topic, he's a son of Sakon, oh wait. Just like Marino and Takuma Sato, it's just a huge coincidence how Naoki and Sakon Yamamoto are not related whatsoever, despite both being racing drivers. However, now I think about that, it wouldn't have made sense at all since Sakon is only 6 years older. I now see how off topic this video is getting. So Yamamoto, oh come on now no one knows who's being talked about. Naoki Yamamoto began his racing career in go-karts in 1994, aged around just 6. Although there isn't much record of his karting, I believe he was relatively successful and started his car career in the same way as F1 driver and pro at being short Yuki Tsunoda did, moving up to the Suzuka Circuit Racing School in 2006 when Naoki graduated the same year, giving him not only a membership in the Honda Formula Dream Project, but the opportunity to race in Formula Challenge Japan in 2007, where he placed second overall in the standings, and he then moved to the J Japanese Formula 3 Championship in 2008, where he placed fifth overall, picking up a win in Okayama and placing behind no one special. But staying in the championship again for 2009, he took the championship win in the national class, of which they couldn't have made the standings table more confusing, but trust me he won. So after this pretty short but sweet junior career, Naoki would then step up to the top tier of Japanese motorsport for the next 10 years, racing in Super Formula and Super GT every year since 2010, and don't think he hasn't been successful. Yamamoto debuted in the Super GT series in 2010, driving a Honda HSV10 GT for Team Konomitsu. He scored a podium on his debut at Suzuka, and took another third place at the Suzuka Endurance Round towards the end of the season, placing him 8th in the championship on his debut. He then took 2nd in the opening round at Okayama in 2011, however the rest of the season wasn't quite as good, and he finished 9th with 40 points. In the following year of 2012, he then took 2 podiums to take 5th in the standings, the best Honda of that year. Then 2013 was the year he took his first win in Super GT, finishing P1 at Suzuka putting him 4th in the standings, followed by 2014 which was also 4th in the standings, but driving in the new Honda NSX. 2015 was notable as he finished 3rd with a win and 2 podiums, but since you don't need to hear his results for literally every year, the next notable year was 2018, where he took a win and 3 podiums to take his first Super GT Championship, which was then replicated again in 2020, making him one of the most successful Super GT drivers in history. Damn, I got through 10 years of racing in one paragraph. I'll also mention that in 2019 he was a teammate of Jensen Button, and although Jensen did beat him that year taking the title, Jensen said how Naoki was a really nice guy and he enjoyed working with him. But alongside all this, apart from sticking with Honda and still being a factory driver to this day, he raced in Super Formula as well, or as it was called until 2013, Formula Nippon, starting this campaign with Satoru Nakajima's team, Nakajima Racing, before having a long partnership with Team Mugen from 2000. 2011 to 2018 before switching to Docomo Team Dandelion Racing in 2019 to the present. And if anything, Yamamoto was more successful here, even though it took him longer to get to grips with these immensely quick cars, faster than F2 and IndyCar, where in 2010, 11 and 12 he only had a best finish of 4th. I say that like it's a bad thing, but once he did get used to it, he was quick, and in 2013, out of the 7 races, he took 4 podiums and a win, becoming the Super Formula Champion of that year. 
whatever the series is called then I can't keep up. Over the next few years Wand is great, picking up two wins in a podium in four years, which judging the number of races per season and the competitiveness of the grid still isn't that bad. He was then back on top in 2018, taking three wins to become a two-time champion, and in 2019 he finished seconds just behind Nick Cassidy, with a great performance at Sportsland Sugo, the narrowest and one of the shortest tracks in Asia. That's unofficial, don't quote me on that. 2020 he stayed in Super Formula again and had to share the grid with Tatiana Calderon, a driver who proved she was incapable of filling out her Japanese racing license properly, a point that she entered her name in the non-Asian way of Tatiana Calderon as supposed to be Calderon Tatiana, meaning she had to spend the whole season with herself abbreviated TAT. Well done, Tatiana. Anyway, Naoki once again finished on top in 2020, with a win at the Crashfield Suzuka race and another podium, not only meaning he won Super Formula and Super GT that year, but meaning he is now a three-time Super Formula champion and of course a two-time Super GT champion, so he's one of the most successful drivers in the history of Japanese motorsport. These ten years, well actually nine based on the timing of what's about to happen, of success and his junior success meant Honda wanted to treat him, so the 11th of October 2019 was a good day for him, since he got to drive an FP1 of the Japanese Grand Prix, racing in Pierre Gasly's Toro Rosso, and this was what was really impressive, because he finished less than a tenth of a second behind behind experienced Danny Gviat having never driven a Formula 1 car before. Of course, I mean he had driven Suzuka a lot before, but still, that's impressive. He certainly enjoyed it as well, commenting how the power is amazing and how he is very very surprised with how quick F1 cars are. However, despite this, Christian Horner said how Naoki didn't match the criteria for that Toro Rosso slash Alfa Tauri seat, so he never got it. Instead, they kept the lineup for 2020 and then hired Sonoda for 2021. So is Yamamoto worthy of Formula 1? To me, yes. His success in Japan can't be looked over and his FP1 performance was amazing, but will he get an F1 seat? It's unlikely. There are not enough seats in F1 nowadays and he's too old to enter F1 now to be honest. As well as that, not only is there Alex Albon wanting his Honda F1 seat back, but up and coming stars in Formula 2 like Liam Lawson, Yuri Vips and Jehan Daruvala. So what do you think of Naoki Yamamoto? Comment down below. As always, be sure to like and subscribe as it'll really help me to get 1,000 subscribers. But with that, I'm Daniel. Have a nice day.